Hi, I'm Mohammad Hamdan, and this is Nightline, the top stories. Malaysia proposes three key points in offering solution to global issues. And my Sujatra monkeypox notification feature to be activated beginning Friday. Good morning. Countries in Asia need to play a role in leading a divided world, despite the differences in opinions and standpoints following traditional and non-traditional threats. To that end, Malaysia proposed three key points in offering solutions to global issues, besides enhancing multilateral cooperation among countries in Asia. The three key points were proposed by Prime Minister Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob in his inaugural keynote address at the 27th Nikkei Conference in Tokyo, Japan, in front of 181 delegates nationwide and more than 200 participants online. He said for the first point, strengthening regional economic integration. The most important aspect was to focus on efforts to strengthen the ability of the Asian region in dealing with changes in globalization after the COVID-19 pandemic. Bagi menjayakannya, pembuat dasar sama ada dalam sektor swasta atau awam perlu bekerjasama membina jaringan logistik yang mantap, membina infrastruktur pasaran digital berkaitan keuangan dalam rantaian bekalan dan mempromosikan pembangunan teknologi digital inovatif yang dapat memberi kelebihan kepada PMKS dalam meningkatkan penyertaan mereka melalui aktiviti e-perdagangan rentas sempadan. Secondly, on the importance of strengthening cooperation and consultation mechanisms, Dr. Sri Ismail Sabri said Malaysia recognized the importance of consultation either at the Southeast Asian level or in Malaysia itself to find solutions to common challenges or disputes. He said this is done through the ASEAN mechanism, such as the ASEAN Regional Forum, the ASEAN Plus 3 meeting and the ASEAN Plus Defence Ministers meeting, where the platforms concerned remain active and prove the concept of mushawara or discussion, which can be done between leaders and stakeholders for regional security and peace. Bagi usaha memperkasakan peranan Asia melalui mekanisme kerjasama serantau, kita perlu juga berhati-hati dalam tindak balas terhadap isu-isu sedia ada dan juga yang baru muncul. Tidak perlu diadakan rangka kerja baru. Sebaliknya, platform sedia ada boleh digunakan untuk tujuan tersebut. Di peringkat sejagat, Asia harus percaya dan berpegang teguh kepada proses yang terbina sejak berdekat lamanya dan menggunakan kaedah yang terbukti berkesan selama ini untuk menyelesaikan isu-isu semasa. In calling Asia and the global partners to work together to address the challenges of climate change, Dr. Sri Ismail Sabri said in 2021, more than 57 million people became victims of climate change-related disasters in the Asia-Pacific region and by 2050, much of Asia had been predicted to face extreme rising temperatures, rainfall and heat waves, which will wreak havoc on the economy and society. He said it was time for policymakers to accept the fact and admit that climate change would require changes in efforts towards preserving regional peace, prosperity and security. He also stressed that Malaysia was committed to working with countries with a vision to address climate change, and described the Asia Zero Emission Community, inspired by Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida, as a good starting point. The Prime Minister added, given its economic strength and influence at the global level, the Asian region was in the best place to navigate change, thus forming a new status quo based on universal awareness and determination. <laughs> Meanwhile, during the question and answer session, Dr. Sri Ismail Sabri said Malaysia is confident that the Indo Pacific Economic Framework, IPATH, will strengthen economic cooperation between countries in the Indo Pacific and the ASEAN region. 
He said the new trade initiative provides a holistic structure to resolve trade issues with partner countries. Dengan penekanan terhadap penyelesaian kepada isu berkaitan perdagangan dan pelaburan, saya menjangkakan bahawa sektor-sektor perubatan, elektrikal dan elektronik serta ekonomi digital akan mendapat manfaat melalui inisiatif perjanjian tersebut. The Prime Minister added that Malaysia is expected to ratify the Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership, CPTPP, by year-end. Together with RCEP, the CPTPP will create the space for the implementation of the Free Trade Area of the Asia-Pacific FTAAP initiative. Dato Sri Ismail Sabri also said that Malaysia foresees exports of products such as E&E, optical and scientific equipment and chemicals to CPTPP markets to increase following the ratification of the trade pact. And later that night, world leaders who participated in the 27th Nikkei conference in Tokyo, Japan, attended a dinner on Thursday. It was also attended by the Prime Minister Dr. Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob with the delegation. He spent more than an hour at the event and had informal meetings with other world yeah. leaders. At the event, Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida yeah. delivered a speech of appreciation for the delegation that participated in the two-day international conference on the future of Asia. Also present were the Prime Minister of Singapore, Lee Hsien Long, and Thailand Prime Minister Prayut Chan O Cha. Hosted by Nikkei Incorporated, the Nikkei Conference, held since 1995, is an annual gathering of political and economic leaders, as well as industry leaders from the Asia Pacific region. In this official working visit to Japan, Dato Sri Ismail Sabri is scheduled to hold a four eyed meeting with Kishida on Saturday. Now, beginning Friday, travellers coming from countries with reported monkeypox cases will be sent an alert on their MySajatra app. Health Minister Kairi Jamaluddin said the MySajatra app will be updated so that passengers coming from countries where monkeypox is endemic and isn't will receive an alert. Buat masa ini terdapat dua makmal yang boleh menjalankan ujian uh, monkeypox iaitu uh, di Institut Pendidikan uh, Perubatan AMA dan makmal uh, kesihatan awam uh, di bawah Kementerian Kesihatan Malaysia. Uh, cara kita uh, buat ujian bagi monkeypox ini adalah uh, sebagian besarnya adalah melalui uh, polymerase chain reaction ataupun uh, PCR. He told this at a virtual media conference on the sidelines of the World Health Assembly at Geneva, Switzerland, on Thursday. Kairi said these travellers would be reminded to monitor for symptoms for 21 days, as the incubation period for monkeypox was up to three weeks. He said there were no monkeypox cases in Malaysia and that these were precautionary measures taken by authorities to prevent an outbreak. Kairi also said the health ministry would increase its diagnostic capabilities to screen for monkeypox using a PCR test. In other news, a three-year-old child suspected to have been infected with monkeypox recently was confirmed positive with the hand, foot and mouth disease, HFMD. Health Director General Tansi Dr. Nur Hisham Abdullah in a series of tweets on Thursday said a sample test was conducted on the child to confirm the results. Tan Sri Dr. Nur Hisham said the toddler was brought to a government health clinic for examination after the toddler displayed symptoms, including fever, since May 13. Two samples were taken and brought to the National Public Health Laboratory for testing over several types of viruses, including HFMD and smallpox. The test results confirmed HFMD positive for Coxsackie A6 virus and negative for monkeypox, as well as other viruses tested. The ministry said it had not been notified of people infected with a monkeypox virus as stated in a social media message showing a photograph of a child with lesions on the hands. The ministry also advised the public not to spread unverified news. The Home Ministry will hold discussions with the Philippines, Indonesia and Bangladesh on the proposal to recruit workers from these new source countries for the security sector. Home Minister Dato Sri Hamza Zainuddin said a decision 
at the policy level had been agreed upon to bring in foreign labour from other countries apart from Nepal. Uh, after I announced this thing a few months ago, uh, the minister from Nepal came and talked to me and said that uh, no, they are actually willing to send their own people from Nepalese to come and work as security guards in our country. The uh, problem is, as I mentioned earlier, in a few months back, I said, uh, if they really want to work as security guards, they shouldn't just send someone that I can just push with one finger. It shows that, uh, you know, their build is not uh, for that sector. So that's the reason that I said I would like to see those people that would like to work in that uh, uh, sector must be good enough. You know, their bill, their health, everything got to be proper. The Home Minister spoke to the media after attending a Malaysian Maritime Enforcement Agency, MMEA, Hari Raya celebration in Putrajaya on Thursday. He said the applications for foreign workers can be submitted after discussions on the matter had been held. But their entry would depend on the decision of the source nations involved. Dr. Sri Hamza was previously quoted as saying that the government had considered the proposed recruitment of foreign workers in the security sector from new source countries to balance out the shortage of Nepal and local workers in this sector. Moving on, Datuk Zuraida Kamarudin has decided to leave Parti Peribumi Bersatu Malaysia Bersatu and join Parti Bangsa Malaysia PBM. The Ampang Member of Parliament is also expected to meet Prime Minister Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob to discuss her resignation as the Plantation Industries and Commodities Minister. In announcing her, deci her decision, Datuk Zuraida in a statement on Thursday also reaffirmed her confidence and support for the present government. The minister, who is currently in Turkey, said she is expected to return home on June 2nd and will be meeting the Prime Minister to discuss her resignation and new political career. Zuraida's announcement ended months-long speculation that the Bursatu Supreme Council member was joining PBM, or formerly known as the Sarawak Workers' Party, SWP. <laughs> And as for Basatu, Dr. Zuraida's post as Plantation Industries and Commodities Minister should be filled by someone else from the party. Its Secretary General, Dr. Sri Hamza Zainuddin, said two weeks ago the party president had agreed to replace Dr. Zuraida as an appointed member of the Supreme Council. This after she failed to respond to a show cost letter to explain her involvement in PBM activities. <laughs> Uh, maka tempat itu akan diganti oleh uh, cadangannya oleh Presiden Parti uh, untuk mencari seorang lagi ahli parti untuk menjadi uh, menteri mewakili bersatu. A vocational teacher from the Kuningau Vocational College in Sabah was announced the winner of the 2022 Cambridge Dedicated Teacher Awards on Thursday. Khalifa Afnan is the first ever Malaysian teacher to be picked as a winner for the awards at both the global and regional levels. Cambridge University Media in a statement said Khalifa's STEM programs have had a great impact on ensuring everyone in his community has access to a quality education. Khalifa was recognised for his initiative in a science, technology, engineering and mathematics STEM project. The project saw him training students in robotics, drones, coding and other technology-based disciplines. His effort had increased the active participation of female students and special needs learners in STEM activities. Imran demands new elections in six days. News from the Foreign Front when we return.
in the next six days, or he will again march on the capital along with millions of people. Khan spoke at, at a rally of thousands of demonstrators early Thursday morning in Islamabad, aiming to bring down the government and force early elections. <laughs> Khan had rallied thousands of supporters to Islamabad with plans to occupy sensitive parts of the capital until Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif gave in gave in to his demand for new polls. He also claimed that five party workers were killed on Wednesday in violence in Karachi city and two other locations. Before the march entered Islamabad, the army was called in to protect the red zone of the city, consisting of important structures like the Supreme Court and the Prime Minister's residence, from what Imran Khan wanted to be a peaceful protest. Islamabad was sealed off to not allow the entry of the march and police shelled tear gas as Islamabad turned into a battleground on Thursday. Now, two lawmakers from Britain's governing Conservative Party have pulled their support for Prime Minister Boris Johnson on Thursday over a damning report that detailed a series of alcohol fueled lockdown breaking parties at his 10 Downing Street office. A day after the report was published describing a boozy culture in Downing Street during COVID-19 lockdowns, Conservative lawmakers John Barron and David Simmons said they could no longer support the Prime Minister they said given the scale of rule breaking at the PM's office, it was unacceptable that Johnson claimed that he was unaware of the incident. They also urged Johnson to step down so that new leadership can take forward the important work of the government. More than 15 conservative lawmakers have publicly called for Johnson to quit since the reports of lockdown breaking parties began to steadily drip into the media. Johnson, however, refused, apology, saying he still uh, has work to do in government. You're not, you're not Drunken altercations, security staff being treated. With... Uh, read it in its in entirety. Uh, was, was... A gunman who massacred 19 children and two teachers at an elementary school in Texas had warned in online messages minutes before the attack that he had shot his grandmother and was going to shoot up a school. It was reported about 30 minutes before the bloodbath. Salvador Ramos sent three messages online. He wrote in the first that he was going to shoot his grandmother. Then he had shot the woman, and finally that he was going to shoot up an elementary school. The incident occurred when Ramos used an AR-15 style semi-automatic rifle in the bloodshed on Tuesday at Rob Elementary School in Uvalde that ended with police storming a classroom and killing him. Authorities said Ramos had legally bought two such rifles just days before, soon after his birthday. Investigators shed no light on the motive for the attack, which also left 17 people wounded. Kim to reveal new secret weapon against Brunei. Sports coming up next.
selalunya gadis yang jual mahal. Yang ini lelaki pula. Saya akan ikut awak ke sana, ke sini. Hockey, the 2022 Asia Cup. Malaysia qualified to the next round as the Group B champions after thrashing Bangladesh 8-1 in their group clash on Thursday. Hat-tricks from Razi Rahim and Faisal Sari and a goal each from Najmi Farizal Jazlan and Ashran Hamsani gave Malaysia the victory they needed to seal a place in the Super 4 round. Bangladesh managed to grab a goal through Ashraful Islam, which proved to be the only consolation for the underdog team. With the win, Malaysia topped the group with nine points, three points above second place, South Korea. The winning mentality is the key for, for this group of players. The winning mentality, so they continue the winning streak, which is good. It's important for us to grow as a team, uh, keep winning matches in Asia for a start for 2022. Overall, we just needed to be smart. We needed to finish the game the first two quarters, which we did. We got a lot of goals from the corners, and um, the game just went on a bit easier for us towards the third and fourth quarter. So, overall, it was good. Turning to football, the Harimau Malaya squad will highly likely unleash their new secret weapon in the Tier 1 friendly match against Brunei on Friday. Its head coach, Kim Pan Gon, said his coaching team had already provided the new information for their players on how to use this new weapon on the pitch at the National Stadium in Bukit Jalil. For us, very important thing. Uh, we are not looking for one game to win you know, for this moment. Uh, we, what we want to try to establish here, we want to make clear Malaysian way, Malaysian DNA. So I think we try to make clear Malaysia national team football philosophy to put up here. So we we work a lot to change our characteristics of the team, you know, playing style. Although it is tiring for his charges to adapt to this new weapon, the South Korean coach said he was pleased to see the reaction of the players and excited to see how it will pan out on Friday. As he realizes the fans will surely crave for a win, Kim also hopes to prove to them that his team will deliver a great performance with passion, attitude and positive energy in each match that they play. Meanwhile, Johor Darul Ta'zim midfielder Muhammad Shamir Kuti Abba admitted that the team was raring to do their best in applying what they had learned from Kim and translate it into a good performance against Brunei. There's a lot of information that uh, yeah, goes through but we take it as a learning process because we, as we know that they are, this is a good progression for us. Uh, even though there are some changes, but we have to adapt fast because the time is not much. But we will, uh, we will try to do our best to implement what we have learned. Apart from Brunei, Malaysia are scheduled to meet Hong Kong in another warm-up encounter on June 1st, before they take on Turkmenistan on June 8th, followed by Bahrain and Bangladesh 
in the 2023 Asian Cup final qualifying round. Ayo semarakkan sokongan anda untuk Harimau Melaya. Siri persahabatan antarabangsa. Secara langsung hanya di TV9 dan Astro 149. After this breather, ex Sabah minister gets three years jail for forgery. Stay tuned. Dr. Sri Ahmad Zahid Hamidi argued that the £6 million ringgit he received from two individuals connected to the supply of chips for Malaysian passports was not a bribe. He insisted that it was nothing more than a political donation meant to be used for charitable purposes. He contended that even those who had given the money to him had previously testified that political contribution was also a mechanism of amal jariah or charity. While testifying in his own defence at the Kuala Lumpur High Court on Thursday morning, the former Deputy Prime Minister and Home Minister also described the charges against him as slanderous. Datuk Sri Ahmad Zahid is standing trial on 47 charges, 12 of them for criminal breach of trust in relation to more than 31 million ringgit of charitable foundation Yayasan Akal Budis funds, 27 counts of money laundering and 8 counts of bribery charges. Kuala Lumpur Sessions Court on Thursday sentenced Dr. Peter Anthony to three years imprisonment and a fine of 50,000 ringgit. He was found guilty of forging a letter for a mechanical and electrical MNE maintenance work at University of Malaysia Sabah UMS. Judge Azura Alwi also ordered the former Sabah Infrastructure Development Minister to serve a 15-month jail sentence if he failed to pay the fine. Dr. Anthony was charged in his capacity as Managing Director of Sharikat Asli Jati Sandian Berhad with forging a letter from the office of UMS Deputy Vice-Chancellor dated June 9, 2014 by inserting a false statement with the intention of using it for fraudulent purposes. The offence was allegedly committed at the office of the Prime Minister's Principal Private Secretary at the Perdana Putra Building in Putrajaya between June 13th and August 21st, 2014. He was charged under the Penal Code, which provides an imprisonment for up to seven years and a fine upon conviction.
As Nightline draws to a close this time around, we leave you with visuals of Salango Road and Transport Department RTD Ideal Fitri Open House. The event was attended by RTD Director General Datuk Zailani Hashim, Salango RTD Deputy Director Ahmad Kamarun Zaman Mehat, and hundreds of others RTD personnel. With that, I'm Muhammad Ahmad Hamdan. Thank you for tuning in and stay safe, Malaysia.